So I'm going to cut these things off with a saw and then I'm going to chop them off with a chisel and then scrape it down uh, smooth, flat. Uh, but uh, the way I hold it down is the same way Dave Sawyer showed me years ago and that's with uh, a stick with an old towel wrapped around it and uh, put it down right a hickory stick. Uh, And I just put a deep throat, deep throat clamp on it, and you can't you can't move the thing, so it works out great. Uh, I I don't own a flush cut saw, but I've seen them cut with it. And my problem is that the saw marks then are right up on top of the seat, and I guess you could take a scraper and scrape it out, and maybe that would be a good way to do it too. But it's not the way that that I do it. So I saw it a little bit proud. <laughs> And then I take a, one of these gouges right here. It's got a number three sweep on it. And the width on it, I guess 35 millimeters, I guess that's what you call it. And uh, uh, I think they're the brand is file. I don't know. Anybody else know how to pronounce that thing? Uh, and uh, then I just use this mallet and go to work on it. Now you always have to come out of the cut. If you go across the other side, you've got unsupported wood fibers and it'll break out. So if you find yourself going across the other side, then you need to stop and come back from the other side instead of continuing on. And you need to go below that cut because if you come in above the cut, you'll pull out in the middle of the middle of the leg. Years ago when I first started, I'd pull out chunks in the middle leg. I could never figure it out. And that's what was going on. scraper then I could just come in with this tool and just pair right like that and get it much nicer but I've got a scraper here now you, when you're scraping this since that ingrain maple is so hard you're going to concentrate right on top of that ingrain not let it touch the pine till the very end so I've got the scraper flexed heavy got it smooth. Now I can lightly blend it in. And there you go. And uh, then I'll probably come back and uh, before I paint and sand the seat just a, a little bit and it'll go over it. And, uh, there's nothing really to fix there so it's in good shape. Uh, so I go on and do the rest of them. Now these back here are a tad bit different. Of course I'm going to turn the seat around to do to do those <clears throat> and they're just a, a, a tad bit different because uh, it's a little tighter back in there uh, I do it really the same way so I'm not going to waste time to show you how to do it uh, but one thing is if you can see that this gouge is is arced like that and it comes straight across and that's fine for up here but it'll dig in those corners will dig in in the sides of the seat over here if it's not arced. So that's one thing you might take note of. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and cut these off while you aren't looking and then we'll come back. So I got them all chopped off and uh, scraping the last one. So uh, since I'm using a different scraper, I thought I'd show you this. So this is just a gooseneck. I, this one right here fit in there too, just that curved one. Yeah, that'll fit also. Uh, so I just concentrate right on top of the maple, hit it in a couple of different directions. The outside of the scrapers a little sharper, and that's it. 
that's looking good and a couple of light passes across it. Okay, so only one more thing to do before we start mounting the back on here and that is I like to bevel off the back of this spindle deck <clears throat> and uh, so first I'll draw a, a line here to cut to about uh, oh I'd say 3 sixteenths in and then it'll just be a flat 45 okay got my line mark now I'm going to cut to the line uh, could do that with spoke shave. I like doing it with a draw knife. It's it's really fast, and since you're cutting mostly in grain back here, short grain, uh, the low angle of the draw knife being that you're only talking about the angle of the bevel, whereas a spoke shave you got the bed. Unless you got a wooden body spoke shave, then you just got the same thing. So maybe you could use that, be fine. But I use the draw knife. But the uh, low angle of the draw knife really cuts that. Uh, that end grain just slick and uh, now this is a bevel down knife and if you want to know all about that I got a whole video on sharpening it and talking about it uh, <clears throat> and the back is flat but in this end grain back here you can use it as a bevel up and it tracks really nice along that flat black flat back and being as it's short grain it doesn't influence the knife. It won't make it dig down like it would maybe right over here. So first thing I'll do is I'll take the bevel down and I will cut this just to make sure it will cut. Yeah, there we go. Now I've sort of come around the corner here and I can switch it to the bevel up and uh, just lay that back flat down and it will just track. Just really nice, easy to hold that line. Doesn't bounce around with you. Now notice as I'm getting around here to the end grain, I'm skewing it more and I'm slicing it. So there we go, got the nice bevel good crisp clean edge don't mess with that edge it really shows up nice with the paint same way as right here where all of this converges you know leave those edges sharp and crisp and the paint will be really sweet there okay well I'll cut this other side where you aren't looking and uh, then we'll go to the back